Hi, welcome all. I am Ravi Surya, and I am welcoming you all again to the ATA GTR 2022 uh, speaker interview video series. In this interview series, I have uh, Itesh uh, Prajapati. He was and he is uh, one of the members of ATA. He did host okay uh, a talks in last ATA GTR, and it's a good feel okay uh, when we see okay our own ATA member coming and uh, uh, giving a talk in ATA GTR 2022. Welcome, Hitesh. Welcome. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, thanks for the, uh, you know, brief but informative introduction about myself. Yeah. I have okay, much more to say about you, Hitesh. Okay. Uh, I, I, I did learn about you that you're a self-taught uh, okay, uh, engineer. And I did learn that you're uh, in the US, uh, in the US uh, a programmer. Okay, and who, who wants to develop um, um, test automation frameworks? Uh, I, I read that, okay, uh, that word, okay, um, programmer and developer developing test automation framework. That, okay, that made me something, okay, very much um, curious about you. And further, uh, to say more about to our uh, viewers about you, he's a lead automation engineer in PMC Retail. He's from Baruch, Gujarat. I did go through about Baruj today morning. Uh, where is Baruj? Hence, I know it's in Gujarat. Okay. Then I learned about Baruj. It's um, close by to the River Narmada and uh, it's well known for uh, the salted peanuts. That's <laughs> so, what. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love the salted peanuts. And he's running from Baruj and I'm joining from Bengaluru. And it's a very rainy day in Bengaluru for the last 10 days. And today it's joining us. So, uh, you, 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 it seems like you did your homework anyway, <laughs> which is great, which is great. Yeah. 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 Uh, welcome again, Hitesh, for this uh, yeah. speaker interview series of uh, ATA GTR 2022. Yeah. Welcome. I think, th thanks a lot, Ravi. I think thanks a lot, ATA, for, you know, giving me opportunity to even be part of ATA as well as, you know, an opportunity to be as a speaker as well. So I think I could not hope for more than this. I know there are lots of exciting times coming, but I guess to begin with this, I think third opportunity that I've been, uh, you know, attached with AT as well and got a chance to, you know, present something that I have worked or I have invented as part of my day-to-day -day work life. So I think thanks a lot, lot for having me on this conference. We are pleased. And uh, when you say we, <laughs> We also have you there. Uh, it, it, yeah. it, it, it works for both. So when we say we, I'm part of ATA. ATA, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's we are true. happy. Okay. Um, in, your, in your words, can you just give uh, a brief intro to our viewers? Yeah, I think this is Hitesh Prajapati. I think I've been associated with this test automation industry over almost six to seven years. Uh, through this this seven years, I have worked on different automation tools, be it Selenium, Appium, Protractor, uh, you know, Cypress or rest assured. So most of the automation tool that exists, I have at least hands-on or I have a vast experience on it. Uh, also from a language standpoint, I have worked with different languages such as Java, JavaScript, TypeScript, C Sharp. So I have built framework on all of these languages and which has helped me understand a lot of different aspects. So speaking about the source code of different automation framework uh, being, so I don't term myself as in QA or test automation engineer. I, am, I, I have a heart of a developer because I started the coding in terms of just a normal uh, variables, if as functions and all sort of thing. But I, I look at more of a maintainability uh, design perspective. So hence, I like to architect a uh, different automation framework, uh, you know, about me on the technical aspect. If I speak start speaking, it's going to be a lot of things, but I just want to keep it too short. Uh, other than when I'm not work, I'm working, I think I, I am associated with a lot of uh, different, different communities as well. I help people around the Selenium community with their, you know, problems and help them, so, you know, solve them, those things as well. I'm part of ATA as well. Uh, have been part of different conferences, different uh, as a hosting as well as a, uh, you know, individual attendee as well in, con you know, uh, hackathons as well, I think, and uh, also the part of, you know, CPSAT as well. So I think it's a, it's a, it's a great privilege for me to be a part of advisory board member of CPSAT. So I, love, I like to do a lot of community work as well, and hence I am coming forward to share my knowledge with the community as well. So yeah, I guess that's, that's what 
uh, uh, is about me. Okay, and uh, I also uh, read that uh, you have a uh, pre conference workshop in ADGTR, right? Yeah, so I think it's it's a great opportunity. So I, I like I mentioned, I like to share the knowledge as well because the way I approach any uh, problem statement is a bit different. I do not just start working on automation. I just understand the tech stack and then understand what goes best. And I think uh, an opportunity was given by uh, Aditya as well. He just texted me out of the view that hey, you want to do a conference uh, pre workshop pre-conference workshop and I was like yeah I mean that that's good I think it's always good to you know actually share the knowledge with the wider audience I wish this could have been a a, a physical one because okay. it's more fun because I have attended pre-conferences workshop and it's it's so good when it's in in in, in physical way but yeah, I mean let's hope that it, it happens the next time but yeah I'm as for to answer your question I'll be I'll be there and speaking of uh, you know we'll be walking people through a different concept of selenium 4 it's in a practical way and at the end of the day what we are trying to do is whatever we have you know implemented as in bits and pieces we we'll try to make sure that it all comes together at the end of last hour of the day and then we run it all those things on selenium grid that is of selenium 4 grid because it's completely revamped and it's going to be a really good session for a lot of people who go, who, who are planning to join in and who wants to learn selenium 4 with different perspectives so it's not traditional thing that people do find elements and all sort of thing but we will try to help people understand how those things has been developed from source code point of view and then that will okay. enable them in understanding of how to use it effectively so that's how uh, the the whole workshop will be laid out yes uh, that's a uh, that's a very good mindset to start with yes yeah yeah so can you briefly talk about uh, the topic uh, that you're presenting and uh, what will the audience uh, take back uh, by attending your talk? Yeah, so my topic is all around uh, one problem statement, which is uh, which is that I, I'll just help you guys understand the problem statement because when I started working, it came it as a surprise that there are lots of pages in the application which has a similar structure. Uh, to begin with the table structure. So normally with the tables, what do we have is a column and rows and all sort of thing. We might have multi operations like crowd operation, insert, update, delete, filter, shorting. So what I did as a part of implementation is that I did not want it to keep creating page objects for individual pages. Instead, what I did is I created one solution which leverages different concepts uh, from Java. Uh, so I have used records, I have used models, I have used Java reflection APIs. I've used a lot of new things uh, from programming perspective and the solution is de developed in a way that there are just four functions created, add, update, delete, filter and search. And short, only those functions are created. And what it does is you write a Cucumber script and tell Cucumber script that Hey, I want to navigate to this and I want to uh, insert random values to this column and the type of column is either input, select, select to box, check box or the, the, the magical part of that is that it generates the data randomly as well. You can be obviously give a specific data, but if you look at the wider perspective, because uh, static data does not give any value to the automation solution. So we will have to have the randomization to it. So that randomization is also defined as a part of enums and people might be using enums just for you know uh, having us you know uh, constant values but the way i have utilized is that i have extended the enums into a more of constructor way which gives additional functionality of doing a lot of new things so all the concepts that i'm going to present during this uh, topic would be all new. I think people might be using, but consider that they had a limited understanding of enum, and I have extended mm -hmm. to a very next level. And same goes for uh, Java reflections as well. Not a lot of people use a Java reflection. They use it when they want to uh, pick runtime classes to execute some set of test cases. But that's not the whole scenario. So almost one and a half month went into developing this solution. With, which was not which was not there on the internet, but I had just envisioned. Out of that, what happened is the 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 page that was taking almost three days of automation. Now it takes what uh, maybe three or four hours. 
So uh -huh. this enabled me to create automation of the pages that are being released on the same day and I can test it straight. And if I speak now, it now just take less than one hour to create an automation of a new page because everything is created in a designer designed way and all we have to define is what kind of random data that you want to generate as a part of this so a lot of thought went into this process but at the end of this whole presentation people will get to know that they, they will be able to think outside of the box and the same solution can be extended to n number of levels because that's what i have been doing these days what are the next day, step into this whole solution that i have built in so all you have to do is copy the same feature file and update the column and the same goes for forms as well for an example if you have got lots of forms and fields you can still do that you can just define the name of the field and then give what kind of uh, control they have and what kind of data you want to generate and that's pretty much it i think it's so fast and so reliable that it has under, it has saved like tons of hours for us to develop it and i want to present this to the wider audience to help them understand what else you can do okay. with, with, with the new concepts and all okay. yeah that that's what it's all about okay do we have uh, the gist of this or uh, um or um these mindset being uh, uh being shown in the workshop that you will uh, going to have with uh, no, I think uh, in workshop, it will be purely Selenium 4. It, there okay. won't be anything related to that. Because okay. since it's a 20 minutes talk, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk them through a problem statement, okay. possible solutions, people. So whenever we are, you know, showcasing the uh, problem statement, they might be interested that what other people might be thinking for the same solution. Okay. So I'll start with problem statement, then I'll help them understand whatever the different solution that most of the people are doing. And then okay. I'll demonstrate my solution, what approach I have taken, followed by I'll tell them what are the tech tech. When I speak about tech tech language, tools, libraries, programming concepts, whatever that I have used, I'll showcase that as well. Right. And then I'll show them the solution that I've built and one demo as well and how it is useful and will definitely help them understand how to generate the data dynamically because that's a, a crucial part and that utilizes Java reflection APIs and the library that we are using is Java Pick. So we all we, we all know that Java Picker is like a construction when you when you when you initialize it, that's when a new value can be generated. But with runtime decision making is kind of a different because you don't know what column requires what kind of data and everything structured in a way that any newbie can create this automation of any new page like in an hour or two maximum not more than so i think it would be more of a walkthrough and a demo and then at the end we'll help them what next th next thing that they can do of course uh, maybe in future uh, with with uh, you know at as well we are planning to have a full webinar wherein people can actually join in and then a detailed, uh, you know, a detailed way of uh, things can be demonstrated as well. So considering the time limit, I have kept it to minimum, but yeah, that's a new future plan. I think I would encourage people who are going to listen to this interview that stay tuned. We will definitely come up with a webinar or something which will help you guys actually see things in action where what is defined by so I have uh, everything that I have defined has a reason. So I think that would be a really nice webinar for a lot of people around the test automation industry who wants to actually understand why, how, and what what areas and what concept I have considered. So okay. that's how it is going to be. Okay. So what may what made me curious? Okay, uh, much much more curious is um, this words enums, Java reflections, and uh, um, and uh, the dynamic thing. And um, apart from this, I'm now much eager to attend this webinar. So team ATA, we should be doing this um, webinar. We should do this. And, yeah, uh, yeah, it would be and, fun. Yes. And I have a request, okay, right away on behalf of the audience. Please share, okay, the git URL, okay, of, uh, of the work, okay, what you will uh, uh, present on the dev conference. We'll wait for the yeah, yeah. So, so I, I'm, I'm surely going to, so whatever the presentation that I'm going to uh, put in as a part of this conference, I'm going to create an open repository anyway. I'll yes. create a solution. 
and so that it will guide them as well and right. put the presentation into the same solution as a PPT form. So just like in last Selenium conference, I did the same thing. So I'm, I'm definitely going to keep this for people to even look at it and put their ideas into it as well. So yeah, surely. Yes, yes. thank you, Vesh, for that. And uh, we'll move on to our next question for you. Yeah. Why should one use Cucumber? Okay, that's one question. And uh, well, if you use Cucumber, do you see Cucumber being used in an incorrect way? Okay. And uh, if it's being used in an incorrect way, how would it have to be used? Yeah. So, yeah. so to answer your first question, why Cucumber? Because now Cucumber, uh, so from the day uh, it has been developed till today, if we take today's timeline, Cucumber has, uh, you know, has a vast amount of feature in terms of how we can create things. Uh, first, foremost important thing with the Cucumber is that it is a human readable format. And especially because the non tech not, not all the clients are technical. So they don't understand what what is happening in a test method or something. So Cucumber helps us design a test cases which is client centric or uh, in other words which are in which which clients can understand that what is happening you know in, in this test scenarios so also a BAU who is actually looking at uh, sorry a BA who is actually looking at the requirement analysis and he, who is going to draft anything they can actually start writing the scenarios using the really format what that will help the test automation guys is that they have scenarios ready. Now they do not have to invest a lot of time into it because BA by the nature of work, they definitely create a requirement documents and create scenarios. So mm -hmm. this will help BAs as well define the test scenarios. Test automation guys can always refine it, but they will have at least 80% things ready, which they can leverage. And now whenever we are sharing the reports with client, what happens in uh, that is that the scenarios are actually in plain English language. At this point, Cucumber supports enormous amount of languages. So someone who is who does not understand English, if we want to share the same scenario, you have a different you you have a different language to create as well. So it 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 enables developers or a test automation engineers to share what has been scripted, what what scenarios has been covered. To the client, so it's kind of, it it acts as a bridge. So share, rather than sharing a code, it it is always easy for us to share the human readable lang uh, language or human readable format of any test scenario. So that's that's why uh, it is being used uh, to answer. Uh, what was the second question again? Sorry, I uh, missed it. Do you see Cucumber uh, being used in uh, in an incorrect way anyway in practice of automation? <laughs> Let me answer this question because I am I am a guy who always goes out of the traditional way. So okay. I do I do research what are the best practices, how it has be how it has to be used. But I like to exploit things. The solution that I have designed, it's no way adhering to all the norms or all the rules of uh, you know cucumber. Mm -hmm. I exploited it to. I create a different solution. So, so far when I started with Cucumber, I was always like, you know, we have to use it this way. But with, <laughs> when this problem statement came in, I was like, who defines it? We are the test automation guys. We design it. It's an open source. We have our way of doing things as well. So right. any tool that exists in the market, you you can modify it the, however you want. But the underlying structure or underlying uh, guidelines for an example, example cucumber uh, setting up the step definition create a page object i think that can be created with the guidelines but how to use a cucumber can be defined by an individual as well because uh, every every individual have a different client different problem statement different solution so it won't work with all of the guys so i would always uh, ask people to go out of their comfort zone and do something different so yes, Cucumber is being used differently as well. And I am the biggest example of it, which you guys might be seeing. Because when I designed it, the question that I asked that whether this solution or whether the way I have used Cucumber is a correct way of doing it or not. And mm -hmm. the answer was no, but then I did it anyway. And that's why we are talking about the, you know, uh, the topic that I'm going to present. If I would not have done it, we would not have this kind of solution. So yes. I think 
it's okay but at the same time people should understand that they have to follow some programming guidelines uh, coding practices or cucumber practices as well you can modify it however you want but at least uh, things should be maintainable coding standard is maintained and this is the thing that everyone should follow and it's okay to exploit things that will give you different perspective and it has given me at least okay i am looking forward for your talk rantesh <laughs> just yeah, uh, it's really uh, fun how you have shaped up okay um, in, in the cucumber uh, to use in your work yeah yeah i will uh, move to okay next question that's something okay what i want to listen and uh, more likely it will also okay uh, help the audience so i write that yeah. your self uh, self thought professional self thought so like most of yeah. us okay we wage okay someone okay to help and guide um, at least by mentoring and uh, where uh, where uh, the mentor reviews the work of mentee okay regularly and and uh, it could be the guiding or hand holding to an extent but when i read about you uh, in your bio this word okay uh, struck me okay very well self thought professional so uh, what was your approach okay in helping yourself okay uh, to teach okay means yourself and what are the challenges that you underwent uh, and you are undergoing right now as well and how are you uh, dealing with it yeah so i think uh, self taught i think that's a correct word so from the day i joined in test automation industry i knew little about it because during that time i think 7 years back not a lot of people were aware of automation and i started it anyway okay. and uh, i have been given an opportunity to fail and get better and what that happened is that that made me do is keep trying keep trying keep trying keep developing the better solution and uh, all, all the organizations of so far i just worked on two organization this is my second and the first organization i think no one was there to teach me mm. how to do things and the only thing that uh, i had in mind is that now i want to learn it i'll do it myself so whatever the new things that i hear i start reviewing it i start understanding my first approach to learn anything would be to start looking at official documentation mm. i do not look at different articles i first go to official for an example selenium i go to selenium website i look at, i look at the documentation i target the things that i wanted to learn and i understand my way of working in terms of <clears throat> learning any tool tool would be to try it so any concept that is there i try it myself and see how it it is actually working in real time that gives me an edge over regular things that people are doing because i understand their internal behavior so as a as a as a programming i try to learn a core concept first rather than just you know start scripting and also at any point of time if i have been given any new tool or any new language what i do is i go to core i don't go start looking at how to create a project and all sort of thing i try understanding their core functionality how they are working back in background because In, in most of the solution, what happens is you come across uh, an exception, and then you are just googling around. But you are not aware of what is an internal structure of the tool that you are using, and the the structure of the tools gives you a lot of uh, you know help in what to what exactly to search and how to fix it. So my my approach is always like that to. look at the official documentation try implementing small small thing rather than or looking at the bigger picture so they have a very good api documentation which tells you about different methods different uh, tools libraries so i actually create small so i always create boilerplate of any tool and language combination okay. so whenever i am learning i use that to uh, you know source code or or maybe a repository that i create and play around i don't start looking at a bigger picture i start with the small and then extend myself now i am at a level where give me any tool i know what to do i just need to understand the code that's it but to answer your question i think uh, from the beginning of time i i had a zeal of learning be it anything so i have been into not into just test automation but i have helped developers in defining 
some coding practices as well because when there was angular as a new i had some gist of it so i helped them as well and also help developers in creating migration solutions so there are lots of things so it it i didn't take took it as in like you know i am a q i cannot do it i actually took it as a challenge and learn it and did it even faster than what how developers were doing so i had another guy who was doing the same thing we had been given same similar time i had done it in fast because i always had a zeal of learning new technologies new tools but learning in a right way look at the documentation implement small chunks of it debug it stay in a debug mode do dot and understand what are the things that you can play around so that gives me a lot of confidence in terms of how to use that tool in a better way so i think even today and i think it's going it's going to be there for years uh, that i'll be keep learning I, I, in, in that context i keep learning uh, myself obviously when needed i discuss things with developers uh, peers as well in automation and it gives me a lot of perspective as well one thing to help audience is that never stop learning and never hesitate to discuss things with the juniors because as we grow forward we feel like we know most of the things but juniors have a lazy way of doing a solution so what i do generally is i define something but then i discuss openly as well and they come up with something new which i never imagined so right. i think that would be an ideal way of learning because it's a it's how it work new we can give you surprises so i think that's how you know we we have to keep learning so i think that's that's the approach i follow Okay. Or for most of the tools or you know problems. Okay, so with this, um, I know okay, uh, I mean, okay, going beyond, but um, I cannot stop yeah, asking. Fine. Okay, but I, I cannot stop asking okay, questions. Okay, on this thread, uh, as I see, okay, it will help the audience. Okay, who are seeing this interview of you, how do you handle okay uh, or the fear okay uh, that you will have when you are put into the new things. For example, okay, when you are uh, want to learn, okay, the new library and um, the new language to build, okay, uh, a framework of automation. How do you uh, handle that fear? So, uh, for example, yeah. okay, most of us, okay, when uh, means what I see is, okay, I see the sense of fear, okay, uh, at first, okay, uh, even before, okay, attempting, okay, to think, okay, like how to solve that challenge. so i want to know okay if you are go- if if you went through that stage or, or um it's possible that okay even we we all of fears like like yeah, yeah. attempt new things so how do you manage that fear i think i think that that the question that you ask is actually uh, with with most of the people around the globe be it a developer or be it a test automation guys so it it happened with me as well in past because the way i was learning is that my director was telling me that these are the things that is coming start looking at what we can do okay and little i knew in 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 uh back years i had that fear but now i think the the essence is that you keep learning despite of what fear you have because then you have to overcome your fear and and i am fortunate enough that Uh, my uh, directors and my uh, leaders have given me that flexibility to fail so i have failed many times it's not that i am 100% perfect and i am i i am so much happy that they never told me that you have failed they have given me the opportunity to keep keep going on going on and develop something and that's how i have evolved from uh, for all of this year so it's okay to have fear now standing at this point what i what i would like to share with the people is that even if you have fear relax take some time off start brainstorming if something is being given do not start looking at the tools first start looking at the application that is being developed ask developers the right question what are the technology stack that you have used for for, for example languages in terms of tools it could be angular or asp.net .net core because that gives you lot of information in terms of what tools best tools to use first identify those things if it's a new framework if it's something that has been given to you as a part of fix try understanding what is happening 
because it is happening with me as well that the project is given to me to start fixing and people are like you know i don't know anything about it how do i do it take take some time off relax understand the product and understand the tools why they have been used and just start looking at it i mean if you don't know at all start looking at core understanding like i mentioned earlier once you understand how a tool works you know how to fix it so even today if i have been given a task on a new tool i go to the you know uh, website i see how it works section rather than actual implementation so that gives me enough understanding of what to do because I, I, all of these years i have invested i have understand a lot of tools and now someone has given me something when i look at how it works everything is shorted for me because it's a configuration that you do it's how the execution cycle works how the message are being passed and that that will give you a, enough confidence to start working so yeah i mean yeah i mean I fears it. are always there yeah you know <laughs> i have a, a few words and uh, i will look forward for what comes to your mind as soon as as soon as i say uh, that word okay i think serious okay it can yeah. be you yeah okay yeah will you start yeah go for it okay one word quickly agile project management automation tool baruch salted peanuts <laughs> monday good for me at least friday <laughs> weekend vibes test case sorry test case manual tiring okay it works headache. on the machine <laughs> sorry it works on the machine sorry sorry i there was a glitch in between it works on the machine so the last part i am not able to capture what exactly okay it works on my machine <laughs> excuse <laughs> not reproducible yeah not reproducible excuse <laughs> this interview of you amazing amazing yeah that's it uh, it is yeah um yeah. thanks for uh, thanks for uh, your interview and uh, making the time and sharing uh, your thoughts yeah, yeah, yeah. always always there for the community yeah, yeah. Sure. i will look forward uh, for the pre conference workshop and for your talk as well so uh, yeah and i'm happy that uh, you shared the gist of the pre conference work uh, for the audience and i hope yeah that will be uh, made use uh, to the possible extent yeah yeah so i'm i'm hoping to get the maximum audience yeah. but it's going to be a fun one as well yes okay thank you see you soon in the conference i wish thank you